Hey, I want to thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you got your cup of coffee, and I hope you got your Word of God with you today. Going to have a lot of Scripture in this uh, message I want to bring to you today, but it's something that I wanted to really pour into the Word and dig in there and give you enough Scripture that you really understand what we're going to talk about today. Uh, today we're going to talk about trust and obey, trust and obey. Before we do that, I want to make a little announcement. Starting tomorrow, starting Monday through Saturday of every week at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time in Texas, we are going to have a uh, morning, morning little brief five-minute uh, uh, teaching on the Word of God with, with messages of comfort and support. Every morning it's going to call Daily Manna. Daily Manna, that's 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. I'd love to have you join us for that. Now let's get into trust and obey. Trust and obey. You know, the Word of God is full of trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. What does trust mean? Trust means to put your faith into action. When you have a real problem, when you're going through a real trial, or you have a temptation, a sickness, or whatever it might be, and you're facing something you don't know how to, how to handle, trust means that I'm going to turn it over to God, I'm going to let God have it, and I'm going to believe He's going to take care of it. That's what it means to trust. It's physically putting your faith into action. Now, the most popular scripture of all is, is found over in Proverbs 3 and 5, and it says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, Lean not unto thine own understanding, and in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Now, there are three particular actions that need to be taken in this scripture. Yeah, he's going to direct your path. Yeah, he's going to lead you down the paths of righteousness. Yes, he's going to lead you down the path of blessing and the black path of protection. And, and he wants to prosper you. That's the path God wants you to go down. He's going to lead you down that path, but there is something else involved in that. There is something that has to be obedient to, first of all. Now let's take a look. There you must trust. We just talked about that. You've got to put that in the hands of God and believe He's going to take care of your needs and everything that comes against you in life. So that's an action that you have to take. The second one is lean not to your own understanding. I want to, I want to tell you something. God's not a reasonable God. He doesn't do things by reason. God is a miracle God. God split the Red Sea and they went over on dry ground. God spoke to the winds and they ceased. God took five loaves and two fishes and broke them up and fed 5,000 people. God is a mighty God. He's not reasonable. He does things beyond the reason of man. That's why you don't want to listen to your own thoughts and your own way. Go back to that Word of God, see what it says, and follow the leading of God. Lean not to your own understanding. And the third action in there is to acknowledge Him. That means to give Him the glory, to give Him the praise. Let people know that He is your God. Amen that you are a child of God, you are serving Him. That's what it means to acknowledge God. I am in the service of the King. My daddy is the head of it all. Amen. That's acknowledging who you are. It's proclaiming your Christian attitude and state in life. Amen. So those are the three things that were actions in that particular scripture. Now there is a lot more to living for God than just faith. There's a lot more to living for God than just saying that, uh, well, I believe in the Lord, He's my Savior, now I can go do anything I want. That's not the way it works. It doesn't work that way, my friend. You go over in the book of Romans chapter 6 and you see over there it said, you know, what should we, you know, should men continue in sin? God forbid that we should continue in sin. Another scripture says don't go back to the beggarly elements of the world. We don't want to do that. Let, let, let's read about what happens when we do obey God. Now we know about trust. That's believing and putting our faith in action. But obedience, what does it mean to be obedient to God? Deuteronomy. Oh, man, do I love this scripture. I have used this scripture and preached it so much and lived by it in my life, and it is truth. But I want you to hear the caveats that are in it. What you must 
do to reap everything we're going to talk about. It's a lot of scripture. Stay with me. Don't go nowhere. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. If you fully obey your God, fully obey your God, and carefully follow His commands, I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations. All the blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. All these blessings are going to come. You're going to be overrun with them. That's what the Bible said. The, the blessings will come up and overrun you. Let, let's go see what it says. Verse 3, you will be blessed in the city, blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb, that's your children, will be blessed, and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves in your herds and the lambs of your flock. Now he's talking because there was a lot of shepherds and a lot of animals raised. In today's world, you got a job, you go to work, God will bless you on that job. You'll get increases, you'll get raises, you'll get bonuses when other people want. I'm a testimony to that. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. That's, that's the food in your house. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that your enemies who rise up against you will be defeated. Come on, you will see, another scripture says, you'll get to see the defeat of your, script, of your enemy. They will come uh, at you from one direction and flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and everything you put your hand to do. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord your God will bless you in the land He is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people and uh, as He has promised on the earth. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in His ways, then all the peoples of the earth see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. That fear means have an awesome respect for you because they know that your God is a powerful, powerful God. Hallelujah. And then verse 11 says, The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. What? How do I get abundant prosperity? You obey the commandments of God. It's that simple. You be obedient in the fruit of the womb, in the young of the livestock, in the crop of the land, in the land that where you swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open the windows of heaven, the storehouse of His bounty, to send rain in your land in season and bless all the work of your hand. You will lend to many nations but will not borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail, if you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them. You will always be on top and never on bottom. Can you say praise the Lord to that? All of this, all of this. 14, do not turn aside from any of the commands given you today to the right or to the left. Follow, do not follow other gods and serve them. Now, if you follow the commands. Now, what are the commands? What, what commandments do I follow? They're very, very simple. And here they are. Living for God is simple. Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, and love thy neighbor, that's others, and love others as yourself no matter who they are, no matter how mean or honorary they are, no matter how big sinners they are, no matter what horrible things they do, you love them as your neighbor. You love them like you love yourself. That's the commandment. Jesus said all the law and all the commandments are wrapped up in these two very simple things. Love Him with every fiber you've got. You fall in love with Jesus and you stay in love with Jesus. Amen. And love those that are lost and love those that are around you and love your brothers and sisters. Love them in God. Love them enough that you're going to take care of them. You're, you're going to put them before you put yourself. That's what Jesus did. Put us before Him. That's the commandments we have to obey. If we don't, if we don't, the opposite's not too good. Read the last half of that 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. You find it's not very pretty because he says, if you don't do these plagues and things are going to come nigh you. Now, when we willfully go against God's commandments, it's likened to witchcraft. That's what it says. 
And this kind of same thing that happened to Saul. You know, Saul went out. He's supposed to go kill the king Agag, king Agag of, uh, and, and go out and, and, and take all the land and kill everything there. And he didn't. He disobeyed the word of God and he came back. And here's what Samuel told him. And Samuel said, this is uh, 1 Samuel 15, 22, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? He's saying, God doesn't want your sacrifices. He don't want your burnt offerings. God wants obedience. That's what he's saying. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Another scripture says if you harden your heart and stiffen your neck, you'll be cut off. Stubbornness. Stubbornness. You can't do that. You can't go against God's word. If you do, that's it. If you do, God will cut you off. Now, when you love God, you want to establish a spiritual relationship with him. You want to establish a spiritual relationship with him. Anyone you're in love with, you've got to have a relationship with. Come on, amen. You have a relationship with your mother, your father, your wife, your children. You have to have the same kind of relationship with God. I have a relationship that he's my daddy. He is my father, and I look to him. I look to him for all of my needs and everything I have. And if we have that relationship, I want to go to the 91st Psalm. This is one of my very favorite in the whole Word of God because you're going to find out what happened when we have that relationship. Here it is. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, the King James says the secret place of the Most High, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty, will abide there in the shadow of God. If you put yourself in into that place with God and you abide with Him, you dwell with Him. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. That's that acknowledging God. I will say of the Lord. You're going to tell people. How'd you get blessed? God did it for me. How come you have more, and more than these over here? Because God gave it to me. How, how do you get well when others are sick? Because God gave it. How come you didn't get the virus when everybody else got the virus? Because God's my protector. That's acknowledging God. Surely he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. Listen to this. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. King James says you'll not fear the pestilence that comes by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the plague that destroys in midday. You don't have to be afraid of them. You don't have to fear all that because your God is bigger than all of that. Here's what it says. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come nigh you. All of these things, all of these things that are happening. I'm, I'm talking about every day they get on there and say, well, there was 3,000 more today or 2,500 more today that had coronavirus and all of these and so many more died. You don't have to have fear. Trust in God. Trust in God. I believe if you get coronavirus, God will heal you. If he doesn't, he's going to take you to heaven. Isn't that what we live for? Come on, you can trust and believe God. Amen. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked if you make the Most High your dwelling. Even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near you. No disaster, no plague will come near your home. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on serpents and lions and cobras and trample on the great lion and the serpent. These are the, the things of the enemy, the demons that come in against you. Because he loves you, saying the Lord, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. I will call upon him, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him from the... Uh, deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him with my salvation. What is all that based upon? If you... Obey God, live in obedience, and set up a relationship of love with the Master. Amen. How do I do all that? You walk daily with God. Every day you get up, you walk with God.
There's an old song, I love it. It goes, I'm going to walk and talk with Jesus each and every day. I'm going to walk and talk with Jesus all along the way. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to walk with him every day. I'm going to be with him. He, listen, God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, and he wants to walk with you today. Because when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, that yoke, Calvary broke that yoke of sin off of us. And when, when we're fulfilled with His Spirit and become His image, we get to walk with Him in the Spirit every day. Let's, let's go to another favorite scripture of mine. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This is Paul telling the Galatians about his walk with God. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All that is in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. How do we overcome them? We walk in the Spirit of God. We establish a relationship that God, we can feel Him, we can walk with Him. We talk to Him. He talks to us every day. For the flesh lusts us against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. You ever feel like you have a struggle? You have a struggle overcoming things in your life? No matter what it is, it's just such a struggle. Man, you know, I don't know. I, I just get mad. I just blow my top, blah, 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 whatever. Come on, amen. Feelings you come on that you know are not of God, set up that relationship every day. Put yourself in the Spirit of God and walk in that Spirit. I, I, I pray to the Lord all day long. The Bible said pray always, all day long. I'm talking to God. I, I might be walking down the street sometime just talking to God and people think I'm nuts. But I know who I'm talking to. Praise God. Go down to verse 24. For they are Christ that have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. That have crucified it. How do you crucify it? By putting yourself daily into the Spirit of God. You renew the Holy Spirit in your life every single day. Verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. It's a beautiful thing to be in the Spirit of God. It's a beautiful thing to live for God. Now, one of the things that keeps us out, this thing about the, the, the crucified, the flesh, and the affections and lusts thereof. We are human. We're mortal. We're corruptible. The only thing that overcomes that is when you continually renew. Walk in a life, we, we call it a life of repentance that every day you're searching your heart and making sure you're living the way God wants. When these little lusts come up, you rebuke them. Devil, I rebuke you. Get thee behind me. <coughs> and God will take that temptation away. No temptation overcometh man, but what God makes a way of escape. He will get you out of it. He'll bring you through it. If we live in the Spirit, we need to walk in the Spirit. That means all the actions you do need to be spiritual. So if you want the blessings and the protection, and the godliness and holiness found in Deuteronomy 28 and Psalms 91. Put your flesh under subjection to the Spirit and walk every single day with God. I want to pray. I want to pray right now. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity, God, to preach to the world. I thank you this beautiful Sunday morning, God, that you've given us. We're getting ready to go to church back open again in just a little while. God, I thank you for that. I thank you for all that listen. And I pray over them continually, over their ministries and over their where they are. God, that you'll open those windows of heaven. But let them know that if they will walk a godly, righteous life and put you first, put you first, love, love you with all your heart, and look to you, you will supply every one of their needs, no matter what country they're in, no matter how impoverished it is. If you can take five loaves and two fish and feed 5,000, you can feed those in the world that have needs. God, I speak that into their life right now, and I speak a blessing on all them that they would listen to this and be obedient to that simple thing to love you and love the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I want to remind you, I want to remind you of my message that's coming out uh, starting Monday morning through Saturday. And uh, it's going to be called Daily Manna. Get a word from God. Get a word from God. And that'll be for today. God bless you.